Hello everyone and welcome to SE Geek, the internet's most passionate software engineering show. I am your host, Software Engineering Geek, and on this show we're going to be talking about some Git GUIs, like Tortoise Git and Rabbit VCS. So sit back and let the knowledge flow in, because SE Geek begins now. Okay, in this video, I'm going to be showing you uh, a couple of uh, Git GUIs, uh, you know, beyond the ones I've shown you before. These actually integrate into uh, Windows and Linux. Uh, one's called Tortoise Get, and the other one is called Rabbit VCS. Now, Tortoise Get is a takeoff on Tortoise SVN. It's meant for Windows. Um, I've already installed it here. Uh, I'll actually provide a link to uh, install it in the show notes. Uh, if you uh, see this folder, this is actually a Git repository, and I have this one file which is marked red, so it means it's you know has changes. Uh, if I right-click on this, I can see uh, I get some uh, actual. I can commit it. Uh, there's also a tortoise get uh, menu where I can do a diff and see what changed, and it'll you know, bring up a nice graphical uh, diff viewer. I can also go in here. I can show the log, which, you know, shows me the log of, you know, changes. This is kind of uh, similar to uh, GetK, but in my opinion, not quite as nice. Uh, not quite, well, it's nice, but it's not quite as uh, extendable as, say, GetK with the different views and things of that nature. But, you know, it's it's good for someone who's... Uh, th these are pretty good for people who are intimidated uh, by the command line. And, you know, it gives you a way to point and click your way to uh, a Git repository, you know, um, Git repositories and Git version control. Uh, as you can see, you can do get blame and see who's to blame for a particular, um, you know, change in a repository. I, I don't really have a big repository going on here, so I can't really see that much. Um, let's see what else. Let's just actually commit this and give it uh, first commit. Oops, commit. And, you know, you can see that uh, this is very much, you know, akin to uh, just SVN in general. Uh, one of the things that I don't like about this, uh, as opposed to, uh, say, get GUI, is it's not, it doesn't really give you the ability to break up commits and, and be very fine-grained. Like I showed you uh, when I first started doing commits, I don't remember what episode that was at this point. But, you know, it's it's good for, you know, someone who's just going to, you know, do one commit. They're not going to do very fine-grained commits, but they'll probably do bigger commits. You know, it's, it's, it's probably good for, you know, someone who's very beginner with version control in general. Someone who, as I said, is not as, you know, savvy with version control. Or with uh, the command line, I mean. Now... There are some caveats to using get uh, Taurus get in general. Uh, one of them is uh, I'll bring up uh, the Windows task menu. You'll see this little guy right here, which you know, unfortunately, with Windows, you know, it doesn't allow me to scale things uh, as easily in Linux. Uh, I could probably bump up the uh, font size and whatnot, but for now. Anyways, uh, you have this tortoise get cache, and this can cause problems because it can get to you know it can get out of date. There can be issues with it. It can uh, actually make it so that you can't actually delete a repository. Um, I've seen that in the past, like in the newer version. Uh, let's try this and see if it'll work. It actually worked here. But I've I've had uh, you know just points in the past where I've had major issues just trying to delete a repository because you know it was cached and it, the cache 
uh, actually kept hold of the, the file. So, well, let's uh, just make a new folder just for the sake of it and do a new repository. So you even get uh, some sound effects. Actually, that's just Windows sound effects, but whatever. So uh, another thing I'm going to show you just to... You know what I would do if I was going to use uh, Tortoise Get is I would come in here and let's see where is it settings and you know there's a bunch of settings which you know this uh, as opposed to going to the dot get config that I showed you in uh, you know previous tutorial when setting up get uh, you could come in here and there's all kinds of you know settings for you know well this one has settings for dialogues colors which you know you've seen you've seen this if you've gone through the settings in get k um, alternative editors uh, icon sets and uh, handle overlays oops wait a minute go back here icon overlays this is the hidden menu that I always have I, I always forget but if you want to get rid of this guy over here have it stop uh you know causing trouble you take this uh status cache and turn it to none now i think you might actually lose uh particular like uh the icons but i'm not sure we'll try that once we get out of here but it will eliminate the caching issue because it's not going to use the cache uh, this might have been fixed in this version. Like, you know, as I said, I, in the past, I haven't been able to actually delete a get repository. And as you saw here, I did. So, you know, the thing about open source software is it's always evolving. It's always getting better. Uh, maybe they fixed it and, you know, I'm, I'm just behind the curve because, you know, I'm used to my command line, uh, and whatnot. So we'll go with that. And just check this out. Let's see. We'll make a new text file and see. Okay. And we'll go to tortoise. Get. And actually, let's just do commit. Okay. Username. Oh, I haven't set the username. So se geek. E geek at somewhere dot com. Not obviously not my real email. And okay, it'll bring up this and I can do my initial commit and actually, you know, as being in Windows, it gives you, you know, spell check options. Well, actually not in Windows, but uh Tortoise Get gives you spell check options, which is nice. Um, you know, kind of like I showed you in get K that gives you it in Linux by default. Uh, I believe if you use, uh, M sys get, get GUI does not have a uh, spell check set up by default, but there is a way to install it. Um, actually let's go, let's check this out and do Well, we'll do git bash just to see. So let's see. We'll go to the desktop and that new folder. We'll do git GUI just to see because. Yeah, it doesn't give you spell check by default. I'll show you in another episode uh, how to actually enable that uh, somewhere further down the line. Uh, there is a way to enable it so that you know you get nice spell checking and whatnot. Uh, in Tortoise, you get it by default, and we select the file that we're going to version and click OK. So you know, very GUI, very you know, easy to use. Uh, you know, compared to 
the command line, uh, but it kind of does some magic behind the scenes. It runs, you know, all the commands for you, which is something I don't particularly care for. I like to know the commands I'm running, and I like the fact that I can, you know, change all the options. That's one thing, since you're not using get K with this, you don't have, like, the options of the views, uh, where you can pass in anything from, you know, any of the commands from get log, uh, you know, as uh, with uh, get GUI, you don't have the ability to break commits up very easily. However, if you have Tortoise get installed and you have you already have M uh, msys get installed, you can use msys get. You can use uh, all the tools that you already have installed and just use Tortoise. You know, as an extension. Uh, you know, to make things easier and nicer for you if you're, you know, again, not as uh, comfortable with the command line. So that's that's one option. We'll go over to the Linux side here, and you'll see that this kind of looks very similar to uh, what we just saw in Windows. And this is what's called, this is uh, called Rabbit VCS, which uh, if I right-click on here, you see simil very similar menu, very similar options. Um, with this one, I don't believe I've ever had a problem with its cache. Uh, so, you know, Rabbit VCS I've had installed, and I've, although it does have a problem with this particular, because I can see that there's more to this, which is very annoying. <laughs> Come on. I have to be right on that edge. Ah, got it. To look at its uh, particular settings. So, you know, this has uh, where you can change, uh, you know, your diff tool, your merge tool. Has some saved history. Um, status checker. Fresh information. So gets and this is just the actual configuration and you can actually I guess set the config file so gives you similar options and uh, if you let's right click and go to rabbit and show log and as you see it's it's very similar again to get K um, here but again, you know, it's it's a little bit limited. Uh, Rabbit VCS is, you know, it's it's come a long way since its original inception, which it was uh, actually not Nautilus SVN originally, which was you know, kind of a clone of uh, you know Tortoise SVN. So you know, this is very similar, but again, it's kind of limited. Uh, you know, I, I don't even have a way to search here from what I see. Um, so that's that's kind of limited. But, and let's just make a change here. Just throw some stuff here and do a commit. So, you know, as you see, kind of red, just like tor tortoise gets. And if I come in here, I can commit this. And again, you know, although actually it seems that tortoise get doesn't have the spell check built in, but, uh, you know, I can commit that and it committed it. So, you know, it can be used, but I, I would say, you know, especially if you're on Linux, I would say just use the command line and use the built-in GUIs. Uh, you know, it can be nice just to have the little icons for a visual representation, but I I, I wouldn't actually use uh, Rabbit VCS unless you're, you know, again, uh, intimidated by the command line. But if you're intimidated by the command line, you're probably not using Linux. Uh, you're probably using Windows. But... You know, if if that's your cup of tea, you know, fair enough. And those are two options uh, for having, like, uh, integration of Git actually into your file browser. 
Um, it can be useful, you know, just to like, if you're like looking through things, you know, clicking through folders, you know, just to see what's, uh, you know, up to date and what's, you know, in a dirty state and stuff like that. But a couple options for you. So that's pretty much all for now. I'll see you next time.